Hello again, this is UML Operator. Okay, in this session we're going to be talking about custom drawing styles. And typically in enterprise architecture we start with requirements. We start drawing relevance between those requirements and building blocks, architecture building blocks, solution building blocks, as we're going through trying to understand the data and the operations of a particular company's needs, getting down to a point using the exact same model references into simple block diagram views, and then being able to custom draw what we've articulated for our client stakeholders. As usual, I direct you to the Sparks Welcome page. You all should know how to get here by now. And then from here, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Modeling Fundamentals, and then we're going to go to Model Diagrams, and then we're going to go down here to Custom Diagram Styles. And you can read ahead, follow along. I'm just going to cover this material at a high level. First, let's start out by creating a custom diagram. So I'm just going to pick this folder right here. I'm going to click up here to create a new package. I'm going to call it starting with custom style, create a diagram selected. And then what I'm going to do is scroll down to custom right here. And you see we have one choice called simple diagram. So select that, hit OK, and launch it into our space. Now, the first thing we're going to notice is in the toolbox, we have class diagram tools, right? And so let's just drag and drop a class element in. And you can see everything I bring in is a custom draw element. How do I know this? Two things. One, I'm in the diagram over here in properties on the right side. If I scroll down to appearance, you see that custom style is checked on for this diagram. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that. Now these turn into the original looking element styles, right? So let's prove this. I'm going to go to use case. We're going to bring in an actor. We're going to bring in a use case. And then I'm going to go to analysis. And we're going to bring in an object. And I think that's it for now. Let me bring in a stereotype boundary object, right? So let me go ahead and hit save. Now, custom style, I'm going to turn on. See that? Everything turned to a custom element style. So let's look at the differences. So here I'm going to turn back off custom style, and I'm back to the original style for these types of elements. If I select one of them, I have the original tooling that we're used to, right? I have the ability to grab this and draw a line or association to another element. Let me just do an association. I have the hamburger where I can select it and I get this pop-up menu that allows me to lock and do other interesting things, including find the element in a diagram or in the browser. I have this brush here, which is the appearance brush. So I can change fonts and other colors and the appearance of the element. I can roll to a default you know, image, like set an alternate image. You've seen that before and so on. So I have things that I can do. If I go back over and turn on custom style, now when I select this element, I have a fourth tool. So this new brush here is the custom style brush and allows me to do things like change this rectangle to, let's say, a triangle, change it from a triangle to a diamond, change it to an ellipse, etc. right? Change it to a polygon, six sides, do those kind of things. One of the big features that many modelers look for is the ability to rotate your text. So we're gonna go to the brush again for this custom style, we're going to go across and we're going to go to the fourth one over where you see I can change it clockwise or anti-clockwise. So let's go clockwise, right? 
And now I can do things like create a layer element between something that might be called a microservice. We're going to draw an association and a particular data object or object that's residing in another source or place in your architecture. And I can go here and I can do things like put the text in the upper left, put the text in the top right. I can move the text around. I'm going to go back to the upper left. Uh, you can do things like, I don't want to get into that one, change the type of line from solid dash dot or etc. or go none, have no line that's going to be show, showing up. You, you can always do that as well. And last but not least is opacity. So we can grab an element, we can go here, and we can change the opacity from 100%. Let's make this 25%, right? And then you can do things like intersections in modeling. Let me uh, go to pan and zoom, make this a little larger. Do intersections in models, in modeling. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna change the opacity to 0%. And you can do things like this for Venn diagrams, for intersections in your architecture. Instead of having to draw, you might hide an association, visibility hide, and you might come in here and uh, change the opac opacity of this element. I don't know, let me make this 50% this time and do things like that. Let me get rid of this association. So very powerful what you can do in custom drawing. And you can do this at the diagram level for every element that's in that, that particular diagram. So this is custom style off. This is custom style on. Now the issue for making the entire diagram a custom style is it doesn't give you the ability to take particular items and make them not a custom style. And there may be various reasons for you wanting to do that. Go to this e-commerce default view where we have attributes, operations, and receptions turned on. We don't have requirements turned on. We're just exposing these right now, right? And I'm going to select anywhere within the diagram and I'm going to change the custom style. Now everything is custom style right now. Anything that I bring in will be a custom style, but I don't necessarily want that when I'm modeling in every case. So let's turn custom style off in the diagram properties under appearance. So turn it off and bring it back to this point. I can make individual elements a custom style by simply right clicking on it, going to appearance, enable custom draw style. Now this is in a custom draw style and I have the style paintbrush, not the appearance paintbrush, but the style paintbrush show up for me. So if I go to this element, I don't have it. For this element, I do. And in this case, I might want to rotate the element in order to show a layer in between my customers and whatever my service layer is. So I can do things like that. And usually, I don't make the entire diagram custom draw. I do elements that I want to be custom draw. So like chat. I'm going to right click on this, go to appearance. I'm going to go to enable custom draw style. And then I might do something because I want this represented as a microservice. So I'm going to go to a polygon, six sides. I might do something like this so that I can represent services or microservice layers that might be standing out. Because our virtual assistant bots and services are going to be deployed in our runtime fabric on our, in our service layer, all right? So I'm able to go around and customize individual elements to what I'm trying to present. So we're in a component diagram in this case. We're going to select inside. We're over in properties window under appearance. Let's make this a custom style diagram type. And then what I can do is I can make it hand-drawn. You know, I can do really cool things like that. Let me uh, zoom in on this a little bit more, right? So, you know, whiteboard, I can do things. So let me turn those off. I can also take individual elements, right click on them, 
go to appearance, enable custom draw. And then I get the tooling up here where I can do things that I showed you earlier, you know, change the shape, set the how the title or name is oriented right now it's none clockwise anti or counterclockwise i'm able to set size position padding i'm able to put solid line dash line dotted line dot dash line a little hard to see in this particular case but you can do things like that so let me take it back to solid let me make this border a little darker for this uh, something like that so another favorite amongst modelers when you have custom style is over on the right you'll see something called stacks and let's just go ahead and make it the maximum for stacks so you can do really cool stuff like creating a stack look uh, let me go to pan and zoom make this a little larger a stack look and then let me right click on this uh, again and let's set the direction. So default is northeast. Let's go northwest. Let's go in the other way. You can change the direction for you know whatever presentation that you're doing. I don't usually change it. Northeast always works fine for me. Again, you can do this for any diagram type here. We're in a use case. We're over in properties. We're under the appearance section. We can ch change a use case into a custom drawing style. Let's turn it off. I can right click on a particular element, mouse over appearance, and I can enable individual elements within a diagram as a custom drawing style. So I get the tools available once I do that. All right, so enable custom drawing style at the element, it's checked on. Click it again, it's checked off. So I hope this video has helped you be able to go move from what you might consider complicated architecture views to simple client presentation views in order to collaborate your architecture across your entire project or projects. So very powerful in Sparks Enterprise Architect allow you to do this far more than a drawing tool. There's tons of intelligence that's stored in a SQL database underneath it to help you deliver your architecture the way that you want to, when you want to. Thanks very much for watching. Please leave a like if you like this. Comments down below, good or bad. Let me know what you think. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Happy modeling.